these explosive volcanic mountains. They grew to towering heights in two growth spurts. They're the Andy Mountains of Chile. This is on Live Science by Laura Gegel. We usually see the sharp edges of the towering mountains. We see them in the Rockies, for example. These are new mountain ranges, as opposed to the rounded cones of the older mountain ranges that we see, for example, in the eastern, the east coast, the eastern seaboard. These are the Cuevas del Pain in Chile, and they're part of the Andes mountain range. Far from a process of smooth, inevitable ascendance, the formation of these iconic Andes mountains was downright explosive. In other words, the way it formed was, of course, by explosive action. The peaks rose skyward along the western coast of South America dozens of millions of years ago. Violent volcanic activity rocked the continent. This is what they knew, the new study finds. Researchers made the discovery by studying the buried remains of the continent's tectonic plates. As we know, it's the area, again, where the Pacific plate plunges down under the North American and the South American plates. In this case, it's the South American plate. And what the scientists found surprised them. The 4,300 mile long Andes, it's over 7,000 kilometers, the longest continuous mountain range in the world. And it didn't form in the way scientists thought. Previously, geologists thought that they believed that the Nazca Oceanic Plate, which lies under the Eastern Pacific Ocean, so that's the Nazca Plate, the Southern Plate, had steadily and continuously subducted, slipped under South America, which had the ground rise and eventually create the towering Andes. The Andes Mountain Formation has long been a paradigm of plate tectonics. This is what the study co-author Johnny Wu, a sister and professor of geology at the University of Houston said. But after studying the underground remnants of the Nazca Oceanic Plate, which sits about 900 miles underground, the researchers learned that the plate did not go through a steady and continuous subduction. Rather, the Nazca Plate was at times torn away from the Andean margin, the place where it was subducting, which led to volcanic activity, the researchers said. To double-check their work, the scientists modeled volcanic activity along this margin. Wu said, we were able to test this model by looking at the pattern of over 14,000 volcanic records along the Antes. This is what some of, the, some of which date back to the Cretaceous. This is what Wu explained. And these were the underground clues that they got. The remnants of the subducted Nazca plate are far underground, so how do the scientists study them then? When the tectonic plates move underground, that is, when they creep under the Earth's crust and enter the mantle, they sink towards the core, much like fallen leaves sinking at the bottom of a lake. But these sinking plates retain some of their shape, offering clues to what the Earth's surface looked like millions of years ago. In the case of the Nazca plate, more than 3,400 miles of lithosphere, the outer ridge part, rigid part of the crust and upper mantle was lost to the mantle. This is what researchers found. Scientists can imagine these plates using data collected from earthquake waves, much like a computed tomography TCCT scan allows doctors to see the inside of a patient. Quote, we have attempted to go back in time with more accuracy than anyone has ever done before. This has resulted in more detail than previously thought possible, Wu said. And he went on to explain, we've imagined to go back to the age of the dinosaurs. In the case of this study, after analyzing these underground tectonic leftovers, the researchers were able to piece together how the Andes formed. The subduction, the subducting Nazca plate slammed into a transition zone or a discontinuous layer in the mantle, which slowed the plate's movement and caused buildup above it. This is what the researchers said in their statement. Their model suggests that the current phase of the Nazca subduction began 
in what is now Peru during the late Cretaceous period about 80 million years ago, the researchers said. This is what they wrote in their study. When the subduction movement southward, when it went southward, reaching the southern Andes in Chile by the early Cenozoic about 55 million years ago, they said. This contrary to the current paradigm, Nazca subduction has not been fully continuous since the Mesozoic, but instead included episodic divergent phases. This is what the researchers wrote in their study. It was published online January 23rd, 2019 in the journal Nature. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.